In this video, you're going to learn how and why to use borrowed chords in the progressions you play on guitar. Borrowed chords will add a huge amount of options in terms of chords that you can use when writing progressions on the guitar, and that's what we're going to learn about in today's video. Hi, this is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net, and in today's lesson, just as I said, we're going to learn about borrowed chords. Now, a lot of the songs you listen to and you hear um, particularly in the mainstream, typically are written diatonically, meaning that the chords belong to the key that the song is in. Now, this isn't always the case, but a lot of the time it is. There's many great songs written in the key, you know, with diatonic chords, chords that belong to the key, but it can get a little monotonous and a little bit boring after a little while. So enter borrowed chords. Now, borrowed chords are when you borrow chords, literally borrow chords from another key to use in the key that you're in. So we borrow chords from parallel keys and parallel keys are keys that share a root note. So in today's uh, video, in today's lesson, we're going to look at borrowing chords from the parallel minor key. We'll look at several options here, very common options when it comes to borrowed chords, and, and I'll put them into progressions for you so you can see how they sound and start creating with them yourself. So let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to be working in the key of C major today. Good old C major. So the chords, the diatonic chords in the key of C, are C, we have D minor, we have E minor, we have F, we have G, we have A minor, we have our B half diminished, diminished, and our C chord, of course. Okay, so they're the chords in C major. Now, as I said in the introduction, the concept of borrow chords is that we can borrow chords from the parallel minor. So the parallel minor to C major is C minor. Okay, and they're parallel because both keys have C as the root note. That's what determines the fact that they're parallel to each other. So in the key of C minor, I have C minor, I have D half diminished, E flat major, F minor, G minor, A flat major, B flat major, and C, wherever, uh, C minor. <laughs> C. We're in the key of C, but we're borrowing from C minor, so the C minor chord. It doesn't matter where I'm voicing the chords. We're not going to sort of focus on the voicing of the chords here or the way we're playing the progressions today, just the fact that we can borrow chords and create some really cool sounds. Then you can go about decorating it however you like. Okay, so we can grab any one of those chords that I just played in C minor, borrow it from that key, and plop, pop, pop it, <laughs> plop it, pop it into the key of C major. Okay, so I'm going to go through some very common um, occurrences of this that you see in music all the time. Okay, so um, let's let's do that right now. Okay, so I've got a little confession to start with here. I did not, I knew borrow chords, like I knew the sound, I would see these chords in progressions all the time, and I'd think, hang on, that, that B flat doesn't belong in the key of C, but it sounds cool. Okay, fine, we can use a B flat chord in the key of C, but I couldn't quite understand you know, the, the concept behind it or how to explain it. And I didn't know until 20 years into my playing, I'm going to be honest here, okay, I'm 32 years into my playing currently. It took 20 years for me to, to label it, okay? I, I understood it orally, I heard it, I would use these concepts. I just didn't know how to explain it. No one had ever told me about borrowed chords. Perhaps this is the first time you're hearing about them yourself or maybe it's a little refresher and you can take it a little further. It's a very, very cool sound. The world would be quite, the world of music would be quite, I wouldn't say boring, but not the same if we didn't have this borrowed chord concept. It's in music way more than you might realize. We're going to look at the first borrowed chord, common borrowed chord, and it's what we call the minor four. Okay, now the reason is that in the key of C minor, which is parallel to our key of C major, the four chord is F minor in the key of C minor now. Okay, so we can borrow that chord and put it into the key C major, and it's a very cool sound when used in you know, certain ways. Now, the reason why we call it the four minor chord is because it's exactly that. It's the four chord and it's minor. Normally in C major, it's an F major chord, so it's C minor. So if we just begin by hearing that, you know, just a little vamp, C being in the key of C, the one chord to the four minor chord, how's that sound? C. very beautiful sound to the F minor. All right, it's a really 
really nice sound. There's a borough called Little Vamp, okay? But let's expand out a little bit and put it into a little bit more of context being, you know, a few more chords in the key of C major here with that borrowed minor four chord, okay? So for example, we could play something like a C to our five chord G. Now a cool thing to do is play the F major chord, then F minor. Okay, again, we've got the C, the one chord, up the G major five, four F major, and the four minor. Well, that's really nice, okay? And it's very common to first play the four major chord and then the four minor chord. That's very common. We could also just go to the four minor chord. So we might play C to G and F minor for a bar, let's say. So C to G to the F minor. Okay, so that's an option. Or maybe something like this. C, A minor, and the F minor, and the G. So we've got a one chord, we've got a six. We've got the four minor, and the G, and we could resolve to our C. Okay, so that's the four minor chord. Very, very common. You'll hear it a lot in Beatles songs. You hear it in um, Radiohead, Creep. I think it might be in Green Day when September ends. There's a lot of this major four to minor four chord combination going on. So check it out, play around with it. It's a very cool option when it comes to borrowed chords. Okay, another very cool common borrowed chord is taking the sixth chord from the parallel minor key. So for any key of C minor, parallel to C major, of course, we've got C minor, two chord D diminished, three chord E flat major, four chord F minor, five chord G minor, and the sixth chord is A flat major. That's the chord we're gonna borrow from C minor and put into C major. Now, we call this the flat sixth chord. Why? Because it's an A flat chord, and if we look at the key of C, C, D, E, F, G, A is the six. So we've got an A flat chord here, so we call it the flat six. Okay, it's all in relation to the key we're in, not the key that it's coming from. Okay, so it's a flat six chord, and if we just hear it with the C chord, uh, let's have a look here. We've got C, I'm gonna to go to this flat six. conjunction with the in relation to the root chord the tonic of C being C major of course and if we have a look at um, some examples of progressions using that flat six borrowed chord we could have something like C borrowed six and the F so we've got C B A flat sorry Don't worry about which chords I'm using. I'm just going to play very straight here. I don't want to do anything too fancy. I just want to focus on the chords themselves, the sound, okay? So I might use some bar chords, some open chords, but it's, it's really, it doesn't really matter. That's very cool progression. Uh, perhaps something like this. C to the five, to the four, and then there's the flat six there. To the five, to the four, That's pretty cool, okay, using the flat six borrow chord again. Or perhaps uh, this is very nice when you play like a C and then you go to the six chord, just the normal six, and then the flat six. That's nice. And then down to the five. Okay, so again, that's the one chord, standard six, A minor, then the flat six borrowed. That's a very cool sound and what you might notice there once you've played the one C then you get this chromatic movement in the bass you've got the six you've got the flat six which then chromatically moves down to the five chord okay so there's some combinations borrowing the flat six from the parallel minor key okay so another common popular borrowed chord is taking the three chord from the parallel minor key so if we go to C minor parallel to C major, we've got C minor the one, D half diminished the two chord, and the three, 
is E flat major in the key of C minor. So if we take that chord and we borrow it to put into C major, E flat, that's what we call the flat three substitution, or not substitution so much, the flat three borrowed chord, okay? Because in the key of C, we have C, D, E is the third. This is an E flat chord, so we call it the flat three chord, flat three major chord. If we just hear it with the root, the root tonic, C, and there's the E flat. You play my C here. Okay, so let's just do how it sounds in a little vamp, just to kind of get your ear in with it a touch. And then let's have a look at some progressions involving this chord. So, for example, we could have C, A minor, there's our three. So C, six chord, flat three, to the, okay, so there's one possible combination. Another one could be C, then we'll go to the three minor, then the flat three major, and the two. So we've got the one, the three minor, then the flat three major, the borrowed, and the two chord. So that was kind of like the flat six. Uh, progression earlier where you get this chromatic movement as a result of using a borrowed chord so you've got your C one chord you got your E minor three and then borrowing the flat three from the minor C minor you get the chromatic movement between the E to the E flat to the two chord D minor so you get that nice chromatic movement in the bass again okay so there's a couple of combinations that use the flat three borrowed chord okay yet another common borrowed chord is what we call a flat seven chord so that's borrowing the seven chord from C minor but again the parallel key to C major so again the chords in C minor one is C minor two is D diminished three is E major E flat major sorry F minor for four G minor for five a flat for six and the seven chord in the key of C minor is B flat major. So how does that relate to our key of C major that we're going to put that chord in? It's a flat seven major chord. Why? Because C, D, E, F, G, A, B is the seven. This is a B flat chord, so it's the flat seven. And it's a major chord, so we call it a flat seven major chord. All right. So how we reference the borrowed chord in the context of the key we're playing in is all about how it relates to that actual key. Okay, so let's just hear that. Uh, we've got C and B flat major. Just a little vamp there. Flat seven chord. Okay, pretty cool sound. But it doesn't give you too much there until we put it in a little bit more context. Okay, so let's do that as we've done with the other combinations. So here, for example, we could play something like C five chord the four and the flat seven C to the G to the F and flat seven okay that's one possibility there's many this is just a couple to get you going um, something different perhaps here we could go C in the flat seven and the four so one there so that's a very common one you get the flat seven a lot in in rock um, the mixolydian sort of sound um, the flat three and the flat six that happened before you can get a lot of that in grungy sort of music it's certainly not limited to any of those styles it's just a couple that come to mind right now what we'll do now is we'll have a look at combining some of these borrowed chords because of course you're not going to just exclusively necessarily use one borrowed chord you can use as many as you like okay so some combinations as i was just saying um, we can let's have a look we'll play a c to a g to the four minor and the six seven so we're going to C to a 5, to a 4 minor, then flat 6, flat 7, 1. Okay, it's got a really cool sound to it. So again, I was just playing the 1 chord to a 5 chord in the key of C major. Then I was playing the borrowed 4 minor, and then just for one beat each, flat 6 borrowed, flat 6, 7, flat 
flat seven, so flat six major, flat seven major chords borrowed from C minor back to the C. of combining borrowed chords. Uh, let's have a look at another one here. So we could go C to the flat three, to the two, to the flat six, into the five. So C to the E flat, to the D flat, to the flat six, five. Okay, that's pretty cool, right? Just going from the one to the flat three, just now notice how the flat three steps just chromatically down a half step into the two chord and then similarly the flat six moves just half a step down to the five chord so you can get some really nice chromatic movement there, little side slips sort of thing so you you find that yeah you know, very cool things can can yeah you know, become possible for you when you're using burrow chords and certainly when you're you know switching them up and you know mixing them together so there's endless possibilities okay so what you should do here is take this concept this idea of borrowing chords from the parallel minor write them out see what you've got to choose from not every combination is going to sound great just like not every combination of diatonic chords necessarily sounds great but play around with the ones i've given you there swap the order around change the amount of time you spend on each chord uh, try different combinations and see what you like and <laughs> don't do what I did and see this stuff in music all the time for 20 years and not actually really understand what's going on. Again, my ear learned it, but I just couldn't kind of figure out why, what, what how would I explain this? Um, so that's the concept of borrowed chords. Take it, work it, apply it and have fun with it. If you like this video, then you'll love this free ebook I've created for you in my jazz concepts for acoustic guitar series, simply titled block chords. In this ebook you learn the three main block chord types for your guitar playing and how to create great music with them. I also show you how to best visualize these shapes on your guitar so you never forget them. It's as easy as changing one single note in each block chord shape. You also learn a system for easily relating the block chord shapes to each other all over the fretboard so you can play any chord you like in any position with ease. So click the link below in the description of this video and download your free copy of the ebook audio Jazz Concepts for Acoustic Guitar Block Chords. Let me know in the comments section what songs you know that use burrowed chords or even perhaps what your favorite sound was there with the burrowed chord. I'd love to hear what you have to say and if you've got any suggestions for future videos I'm always all ears when it comes to that as well. If you like this video then hit that like button and if you haven't already subscribe to the channel and of course hit the all important notification bell button so YouTube can tell you when I've released a new video. This is Simon Candy from Acoustic Guitar Lessons Online.net. As always thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate your time and I very much look forward to seeing you in the next video.